record. Okay, recording is in progress now. And uh, this is going to be a really fascinating evening. Um, Sharon Reji Maynard is my guest this evening. And Sharon, do you mind if I talk to Corianka for just a moment about the oh. No, I, I, I'd love to have that on the recording. That was great. Okay, great. So Corianka, this afternoon at four, my time, you had a, a gathering of beautiful women from all over the world. Uh, and we did a prayer for humanity. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, um, it was this beautiful gathering with medicine women sisters who were feeling um, the heavy weight of what is going on in the world and the changes. And we wanted to get together to pray together for humanity and uplift each other. So the topic today was the healing balm for the heart. And everyone lended her energy and we did this beautiful shamanic sound bath where everyone sent love and light, healing light to the world. And we did it as a group. We were a big group, around 50 or so women. And more will be listening to the recording because really the number that signed up was pretty big. And a lot of them couldn't make it because it was very late at night for them in Europe and other parts of the world. But yes, it was, it was pretty powerful when women get together and especially women with a sacred purpose to serve and bring the light and love, bring their medicine. So. Yeah, it's super amazing. Like I'm happy to do this all over again next month with Don and the following gatherings you know, we have. You mentioned that you went into a trance when you were chanting. And I just want to let you know it was wonderful. I I think I went into a trance as well. And then, so thank you for that chanting. Oh, it, it was it was a beautiful co-creation. Yes. A lot of, a lot happens. A lot happens energetically when we are together with one, one purpose, one heart, truly. Thank you, Juana. And thank you, Sharon, for giving me this time to share. Can I comment on that? Can I comment on that? Yes, yes, go ahead, friend. So, Corianka, I think that is incredible. Um, and when I'm hearing you say that, I'm thinking of what a disaster this world is because of the leaders that we have. And maybe women are gonna be our savior. Um, and I'm thinking of this group that you're in, that you're doing, and I crave something like that. I think that men can be better, but I think we need to learn. We need to uh, develop. And uh, the only way we're gonna do that, I think is from each other, like you women are doing. But, you know, I guess it was 20 years ago, I was trying to find a book on men's development. How do men develop? And there was this thing called Guyton Iron John. And it was supposed to be about men transitioning into manhood. It was, you, you beat a drum, you hug each other, and you stand around in a circle and you tell each other that you're great. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it for me anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know of any groups of men that do the kind of thing you're talking about, that organize for the betterment of everybody. Do you or anybody know of anything like that? Mm, I, I, you know, I think about Agape Church from California. There is a reverend uh, that is pretty famous from Agape Church, and he's a great spiritual leader. You might want to listen to him. Uh, find him online. He has recordings of uh, church gatherings. It's a very spiritual, non-religious tradition. It's not traditional. Um, church gatherings and he's very inspirational he's a really good guy so that that might be a good way to start yeah that's michael I, beckwith. yeah michael oh, beckwith. michael beckwith b-e-b-k oh, mm -hmm. I'm beckwith. With that. yeah so um thank you for asking that fred and i think what i'm going to do now is uh introduce our guest for this evening uh who is sherry maynard and Sharon been doing um, spiritual work that is very unique for 50 years. And uh, when I went on her website, she says there that we cannot build 
a new world without healing our old and adding new knowledge. And believe me, she new knowledge. And she calls herself a radical mystic. And, you know, that's a word that I had never heard before. And so I looked it up and um, I would like Sharon to share a little bit about what that means to her and also how she started doing this 50 years ago. Would you do that for us? Thank you. But the conversation that you just had just put me on edge. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, put me on edge. So, whoa, where are we going to go from here? It was in 1971. I was in a very traditional patriarchal church, um, having lots of children, when I was introduced by listening to a conversation given to my husband about how to connect with God and never make a mistake because in our congregation, the men got information from God for their families and the women listened to the husbands. Then the leaders of the church got information from God from the church and everybody listened to them. But the women were kind of like out in left field taking care of babies. So I'm very curious I, and I listened in on that conversation and very simple. We, we hear it now, it would be like, get yourself quiet, do a little meditative, breathe easy, give, do a download to God and ask one question and listen for the answer and write it down. And I did and it worked and then I wasn't doing it and I wasn't a man. So I used that from 71 until 75 in relationship to my family because it was okay if I could use it for my motherhood. In 75, my husband was killed in a one car accident that which left me with eight babies under 18. And I used that guidance from what I had been told was not God, but it was Christ. That's who I could relate to. So Christ had, and so I had already worked for four years listening. I'm very telepathic. I do not, I'm not clairvoyant. I'm a little bit, I can sense things, but mostly I get words. I ask a question, I get words. And I had a way to check that because I can't see who is this being called calling himself Christ was what would his words bring? Would his words bring love? Would it bring benefit? Uh, are they speaking of that? And then I, I'm going to apply them. And I did from 71, 75. And my husband died. And now I'm totally in charge. And, uh, and that began my journey into what became outside the box of the patriarchal religion. So fast forward until 89. I am now, I now understand affirmations. I now understand that I can participate in designing my life. I don't have to wait till God tells me that I can do something. I, I can choose affirmations. I was introduced to crystal chakra balancing because I went to do an interview with somebody and I was going to do an article on her, her, how she got from where she began to crystal chakra balancing. And so I started, um, using what I had learned from her during the interview, we were together 10 days and I started to do crystal chakra balancing on my friends. And, and I knew, I knew crystal chakra balancing. I knew affirmations. I had been working with this offline off spirit, you know, spiritual being since 71. So that being 18 years or so. And I, and I, my, my, Friends would come and we'd get the, sh the chakras balanced and energized and aligned and, and they'd walk away and here's an affirmation and they'd feel like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I can now get on with my life. I can now get on with my life. And then a week or two later or a month later, something else would happen in their, work, in their life and they'd be back again. And they'd be back again. And I was told, not by my spiritual guides, but by people around me, that's the onion layer. We have to go through the onion layer. I don't like to do things slow. So I went back to my spiritual guide and said, you know, this energy work has potential here. I mean, there's something really good about it. I don't, I had no earthly teacher. I was just doing what I had been shown to do with this woman I did an interview with. But this repeating cycle 
of back and forth, back and forth of the onion layer is not gonna cut it. We'll spend the rest of our incarnation just keeping coming back every time we get triggered. The onion layer, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. I want, I want to go to learn from someone how to get to the core of the onion, eliminate the core. But I, the way I said it was, I want to go to be taken to where I can get to the cause of humanity's cycling in pain. Because if we could take the sliver out, the wound heals. If we don't get the sliver out, wound will never heal. So I said, that's what I want to do. So where can I go learn that? And they said, it isn't being done anywhere on the planet. Anywhere on the planet. This was the early 90s. And I said, then what? And they said, if, you, if that's what you want to do, we are going to have to teach you because there is information that has been hidden, that has been lost, that, you, that, that it's just not available on the planet. We're holding it. And if, if you're wanting to do that work, then we will, we will teach you. I said, I'm up for it. Get notebooks, they said. We'll bring you clients. Those clients will trigger questions. It's, it was like a research project. So my teachers were all spiritual teachers. That's why I call myself a, a mystic. I, I didn't learn from anyone on the planet. I learned from those who are off planet that I had been working with for many, many years, very proven to me that their stability and their, uh, their integrity. And, I do, and, and, and it wasn't my pain that drove me. It was the pain that I saw around me. And I wasn't willing to, to, to stop. If, if the pain was still there, what don't I know? What more is there to know? What is, and I kept pushing the envelope. That's what a radical does. It just pushes the envelope and you push the envelope. I began, when I began, um, you know, what I, what I had gathered was affirmations. All there is is love. Um, we have it within us, purple flame, violet flame, all, that, all of those things, right, <clears throat> is what was in the, in the personal growth movement at the time. That's not where I trusted, but that I knew that's what was going on. So there came a point in time, in fact, it was very early on, that my teacher said to me, the first thing you have to know is that there isn't two worlds. There isn't earth and then a place we call heaven. That's not the truth. There are eight worlds. Okay, I said, binary. I had no idea what that meant. But, but, but it led me to understand, you know, looking back, you go forward, learning, learning, piece by piece by piece. It's when you look back and you go like, oh, that's where they, what they meant. And they said, eventually, they said, you have to understand the cause of the entrapment that we are, that humanity is in, began in those worlds even before there was an earth. And then they showed me the entrapment. They showed me where we gave our power away. They showed me the violence that had happened there. They showed me the deceit that existed in worlds two, three, four, five, six, seven, and how it was, uh, we were entrapped by those who had chosen agendas to dominate and to use other people's energies and other people's creations. That they are, that there were beings, groups of beings that had not chosen a, a, an, an agenda aligned to good. Those in our family, yes, joy, peace, leadership, clarity, love, etc. Those agendas had been chosen in that first world. We all, but there was another set of beings who had also chosen, but they'd chosen 
agendas to entrap. And who did they need to entrap after their home was sucked away? They had to find others in that greater world I call Antiochia. They ha had to find other like families that they could live off or parasitic by nature. And we became their host. And those particular types of, of, of family groups are not impacted or brought back to wholeness by love or wholeness or purple flame or Saint Germain. Those practices really are effective on those members of our divine families who get out of balance. We've chosen aspects of good were out of balance and good brings us back to balance. But there are those who are parasitic by nature and they're parasitic by nature. It's like if I brought an elephant from Africa home to my place here on the island and I loved it, he's wonderful, but pretty soon my gardens trampled, my doors crashed. Not because the elephant's bad, it's an elephant. It's in the wrong place. These beings are in the wrong place. So because we were atta attached and being our energy being used up, our energy frequencies were diminishing, 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 diminishing. We were dying. So the only reason for this earth is the mission to stop us from dying. And that's what's very unique about, you know, beyond that, what's unique about my work is to understand the mission for this earth. When I first started sharing even that aspect that there, were, that there was an influence in our world that was specifically about domination, uh, those in the new age and personal growth thought I was really out to lunch and, and they had met, that was their right. But I, I, boy, when I applied, the things that I had been shown and put them into processes and put them into practices, my clients thrived because they got out from under that entrapping energy. They got out of the matrix that, that we, the rest of us are spinning in the cycle of constantly recurring situations. And it's not, hasn't, end, well, we have it here on the planet because it's followed us but it didn't begin in the planet. It didn't begin in early childhood. It didn't begin as a genetic woundedness. It happened in the galactic worlds. And that's where I had to go in order to free my client on the table. We had to, have, had to be shown where in those galactic worlds there was a wounding or a contract or a, some entrapment that was still keeping her or him cycling in pain. So that's, was a, that was a big part of understanding this bigger picture. But in relationship to men and women, Fred, that, you know, came up. Another thing that when, when I began to ask of, of my client, when a, a client would come to me, I, will, would con I connect to their higher self. I connect to their, their, their guidance team. They have a team just as I do. And, and one of the things that I found valuable was to ask if this client had kind of a bigger picture goal. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a massage therapist or I'm going to be a teacher, but a bigger picture goal. And all of us, I found, we all have a bigger picture goal. I call it a assigned vibration. We choose it. And the assigned my, vibration might be in this lifetime, I am going to get myself restored to my, my essence of joy. And in that choosing of the outcome of joy, all the things that they had experienced, stored, brought in with them, contrary, that would stop joy from happening, if that became their healing journey. I'm going to have joy in this lifetime. Then, you're, then here's this is in the way, this is in the way, this is in the way. And so healing had to be done. So I had a brilliant idea one time. And I said to my, to my team, because I thought, I wonder if there is a purpose why a soul would come into a male body suit or a female body suit, because souls are, souls are, are, are souls. We, they don't need this body. They need the body when they're on the earth. 
So this is an unusual experience. And so I said, I, so I thought to myself, I wonder if there's a reason we would choose that. And I thought that's kind of ridiculous because there's so many options, whether you're in a male body or female body, there's, I don't think there would be a reason and overall, but nevertheless, I teach my students never assume anything. You get your connection going, you ask questions. What does this mean about you or what, you know, this is where you get your answers. So I took it to my, my team and I said, is there an overall reason for a male body experience? And they said, there is. I went, what? They said, there is. I said, what is it? And they said, to nurture. To nurture from the heart. And I went, what? Okay, okay, but what then is a, a soul coming into a female body? What's that female body? assignment and they said to design cultures and be the leader mm. Mm -hmm. I went, boy do we have that backwards so fred when you said you know we ought to turn it over to women we women should have been in charge the whole time and our and it was intended we be in charge the whole time and that plan got discovered DNA, the wiring for the bodysuit was crippled. Men were disconnected from their heart center. Women were disconnected from their solar plexus center, which is the voice of authority. So we've been walking around in crippled bodysuits, trying to do our divine work in bodysuits that don't naturally have the wiring to help us do it. That's changing. That's changing. So as we put the plan together, so here we are, we're now in the seventh world. And there's, and so you as a soul have a divine family. I mean, you weren't, you did not extend from home into that first world individualized. You were in a group collective family, maybe millions in that group family. And in that group family, you had coalesced with that group around a specific idea, a concept. What would it be like to experience? And qualities weren't there. Numbers, vibrations, colors, movement, nothing formed. So it would be like, okay, I want to experience. What would that? I love the sound of red. I want to really get in and experience that vibrational range of red. And I want blue and I want yellow. So we chose to, to, to take a, a portion of all of that we are as wholenesses within that, the drops within the ocean, you know, and, 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 and extend from home to experience something, a part of our, of our wholeness, not fractured, but a part of our wholeness. And, and we each did that. And, and so when I work with, and especially early on, but even now working with uh, one client on the table, because I, when I do my sessions in, in person, I do it on a massage table, fully clothed with lots of stones and nature things around because that's that shamanic, that's uh, nature is really important for us here. What I would do is I would, would I connect with this person on the table and that person on the table is a thread, a channel, directly, 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 directly to millions in their family, in the galactic worlds. So even though that family up there was extremely injured and still injured or contracted and constricted, one of their members had chosen to volunteer on this mission to extend onto this planet we call Earth in order to try and free the entire family. So with one person here, we could connect and impact millions. And that's different also in, in what I call the tag work. The, the, the 
information that I was given and been given over these years, and it continues to come, it continues to evolve. Um, I put into a, a, a system I call the TAG system of healing and education. And when I first had some processes we put together, I knew it wasn't just energy work. I didn't know what it was. I mean, I had to make up words at first because I didn't know you know, they'd give me information, I'd put it into something and I'm, I don't know, I'll make up a word. I made up a word, but I couldn't find a word to say what this system is. You know, you've got Reiki, you know, you got hands of touch or touching hands or whatever that was, uh, but I had no word. So I finally, after trying to be, you know, bring it through my mind, um, I finally said to my team, I, I can't come up with a word. Do, do you guys have a word for this work? Well, of course they did. They said it's R-E-A-N, Rianne. And I, I, I said to you guys, I mean, they, these, these souls, I mean, they have a sense of humor. And I, I thought they were, they were kidding, with, kidding, because who, who would say Rianne? I do Rianne. What does that mean? I, I don't know, Rianne. So I just left the note on the table and came back next day and looking at it on my desk. And I went, aha. I know what they're saying. They are just saying the end result. This work is re at one now, instant healing. I went, okay, Rianne. I used that name for the work for about two years and then they said to me, let go of Rianne. And I said, you mean stop the work? And they said, no, let go of Rianne. And thought, ah, they meant let go of the word, Rianne. There was a reason. It's come back, but there was a reason. And that's when they said, now you've, you've come up with a name. And, uh, and I brainstormed with some people and we came up with the word tag, triangular, angelic grids, because it stands for what we do. We work with those off planet. Our work could not be done if we didn't have clear connections and clear and secure channels to beings of integrity off planet. Here, here, yes, nature, yes, but off planet too. So we, so angelic represents that spiritual connection that we, that we have in this work. And what are those, what are we working toward? We're working for the grids. We're looking at the grids, an individual's grid to see what is in that grid that causes the grid to be imbalanced and, and get it back into balance. And when energy is balanced, the basic form is a triangle. And that triangle then will become the foundation for sacred geometry. So it can form in any way that person wants it to if the grids are balanced. So triangular, angelic grids or tag, is, is what we do. You know, it was, it was really interesting to have them explain how the mission for the earth was put together. And um, we knew we were owned. I mean, it was like we all, we, we had a software program. We had a numerical formula that says, this group owns me or that group owns me. We were owned and we couldn't just say, okay, we're going to walk off. We're going to walk away from plant plantation and start our own land. We couldn't do that. We had an imprint and, and it was directly connected to their monitoring system, their influencing system. They could manipulate us. They could call us in. They could do whatever they wanted. Those off planet beings. And there were 17 of those families originally and others began to come into play. So we had a lot of parasitic attachments in those seven worlds. So we had to, our divine family had to come up with a different idea. We tried many things along the way. We, it's not that we just gave up, but we tried many things along the way. So we realized that in order to get out from under that parasitic, those with parasitic agendas, we needed a place where energy could be made visible, I'll say, because they are so sneaky and decept deceptive and sometimes the vibrations were so 
we couldn't, we, we, it was too late when we realized, oh my gosh, we'd just given the money away to somebody who thought we thought they were going to, you know, buy our freedom and no, no, they just took the money and clapped more handcuffs on us. We didn't, we'd lost the ability to really discern in, as much as we needed to. And so we said, okay, we need a planet in which the energies will become seen or tactile or discernible. Therefore, we have the law of manifestation for this planet, for this plan. The law of manifestation is not so you can have a great parking place. It is not so you can fix your relationship. It is not so that anything but identifying where there are energies of domination that have entrapped us. That's the purpose for the law of manifestation. Can it be used for all those other things? Yes, it's a law, but that wasn't its purpose. So law of manifestation, physical planet. Well, we've got this field of Mother Gaia, our mothership said, I'll hold the field, right? We needed to make decisions very quickly. So if, if we saw something or sensed something that was off, quick, quick, quick. We couldn't be in mass consensus. We couldn't do group mind. We had to have individual personal choice. So we have personal choice on this planet. No other place in, the, in our galactic experience is there personal choice but this planet. And it's so that we can have the speed of acting as soon as we see or sense something that is of domination, parasitic or deceit, that kind of energy. Sharon? Yes. Are you willing to stop for a moment or would that interrupt your thought process? No, I can stop. I'll take a drink. Okay, good. Because I think that people's heads are probably spinning at this point. And since I don't think anybody except myself has heard about this. So I want to bring it um, into uh, some sort of perspective that is attainable by, by me, let's just say just by me. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you some questions. Yeah. Which way that the mission of earth is to, and the law of manifestation is to make um, visible, so to speak, um, these forces of domination, what do those look like when they do become visible? Look out in the world. You see the legislation in Texas? Yes. Do you see the Taliban in Afghanistan? Yes. You read about what's going in North Korea and the type of government control there? Yes, and the government control here with and, uh, Exactly, and you see that you, at this point, because we weren't able to do the mission in the order, in the quick order we had hoped, what had ha what's happened is that a, that a, a authority to say, to say when, you, when you see something like the legislation, taking away a, 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 a person's rights, women's or anybody's, but cer certainly women's rights, that we, we lost the authority to connect to our spiritual groups and say, this is not acceptable here. Remove it to its own home. The elephant, if you will, isn't, wasn't bad in its own home, but in my home, it would be destroying. And, and so it's, it, it's not about fight. It's about getting those who made agendas of domination, which is not what we chose as our divine families. We didn't choose that. We chose to experience aspects of good. So anything that doesn't expand the good and benefit of all is an, uh, an inf has been influenced by a parasitic domination, greed, deceit. And, and, and we've lost literally through a trapped physical system, the, the automatic connection to the greater, greater realms and say, this is not acceptable here. Move it where it belongs, move it out of our space, back to its home where it began, where it made its choice. 
So the way it works, and, and, and it was only in 2000 that I'm aware of, that we got that uh, restored and it was restored into the female system, which is where it was intended to be restored to be initially that's why for me i have worked with women not because i discount men but we are the problem it's not the men that's the problem we women who were supposed to be the canaries in the mine who are supposed to be the t cells in the immune system got taken offline and so there was nobody guarding the mind guarding the body guarding our, our planet and we have what has happened is we are living in cultures everywhere from, that, are, that have manifested from agendas of domination of all different kinds. Domination. Okay, so stop a second. The processes that you're talking about to remove these um, elements of domination. I mean, we, you, we talked about Texas, we talked about the Taliban. Um, and, you know, I mean, we can go on but what's happening, like you said, in North Korea. How can a woman or a group of a women do processes that will restore freedom, that will restore balance, that will restore good? What power do we have to do that? To me, it's almost like when you talk about Korea, or when you talk about these forced vaccinations that are happening in, uh, in California, for instance, is one of four states. That is beyond my quote unquote control, or is it? No. Okay, tell me. The law says that energy that's in our space is gonna manifest in some form. If it's showing up, it's in our, in our mass space, right? It's energy, it begins in energy. It also says that by you have the right to ask and receive. We just haven't known what that meant. So you individually, all of us at this point in time, have the right to ask and receive. We've been asking our elected officials. We've been asking our religious leaders. We've been asking our partners. We've been asking. But this is where we need to ask in those situations. So in my work, and, I've been, and I work with circles of women, we've been together for many, many years and work extensively in the galactic world first. So I know how effective it is. So here's the process. You see or sense something that feels off. I don't care. It doesn't have to even be big. We were supposed, we were had intended to get these energies. It was just when we felt like, Ooh, I can smell something's off. Well, it's big in our face now. And, and, and that sometimes is why we feel overwhelmed. I think. But as soon as you sense anything that's off, you're, it's not your job to decide, is it 10% off? Is it 20% off? Because there's, I'll tell you, everything in our world is being influenced to some degree by those parasitic agendas. The things that start out as good, if they're gonna make a difference, they'll either be crushed or they'll be co-opted and there'll be weavings of deceit in it to, to, to take it offline. That's how it's been. So if you see or sense anything that feels like off, this is what you do. You have the power, one person, it's not a hundredth monkey here, one person to say to your, you know, you can just speak it, even though you may not feel the connections yet, you can grow in the, to those connections. You just say, and the team I work with for this work is called PTO, PTO, guardian circle, all this energy field that I'm feeling over here in Texas, all around the legislation. You don't have to, you don't have to say, oh, it's so and so, it's so and so and so and so. It has nothing to do with individuals as much as an energy field that gets swaying people. Is it media? I don't care. Guardian circle of media. Guardian circle North Korea. Uh, you, you know, it doesn't matter where you sense it, that feeling or the sight of it or the emotional reaction. PTO I place a guardian circle around this energy configuration. Now, the PTO com is composed of healers, those that can contain space so that 
that because because the energy of just of a deception is big, has been big with the outsiders and they kind of slip away and being in other space that contain and then there are beings who have extremely sensitive noses if you will then they will identify if they're they'll go through that entire field like brushing out the hair go through that entire field if there's any any hint of an outsider vibration at any level they will contain it neutralize it and move it back to its home where it made the begi its beginning choice to be uh, uh, dominating it takes it back okay let me stop you again because this is a huge job i mean we're talking about a massive job there is much that is off vibrationally on this planet right now that it's, uh, I mean <laughs> where do you start now you started let's say with Texas again that is a huge um, task uh, to move this energy um, in a in a more balanced way I mean when we're talking Texas I, I want to be I don't want to assume anything. I want to be clear that we're talking about the legislation of, around uh, being able to vote, the restrictions uh, about voting. Is that what you were talking about when you said? I'm talking about the. I, I'm talking about any legislation that takes takes take, take, uh, assumes ownership over the female body suit. Okay, so you were talking about abortion then. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, ownership of the bodysuit is what I'm talking about, and they call it abortion, but it's the bodysuit ownership. But it, but you see, it's not a big job, Juana. You speak it. Boom, you speak it. You're the point. We, on the physical body, we are the most powerful place. There is no more powerful place to be, to make a change, to call for healing, than in a physical bodysuit in this present moment angels cannot do what you can do i said and masters cannot do what you can do they can follow and they can respond and they can follow through but they cannot call for it only those in a physical body you call for it and i can guarantee you there are myriad myriad of beings trained ready to respond and they take on the job and they take on the job and you're not going to make a mistake because the commitment is not to destroy people, but the commitment is any energy from domination, deceit, usury, parasitic voyeurism, which is, you know, that's a small part of these um, agendas, does not belong here. We did not choose it. It is not part of our divine need to have it but their presence will destroy us. And so we are, you can be part of this bigger, bigger plan, bigger team. And I tell you, it's galactic by nature. It isn't my plan. It's a galactic plan. And, 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 and your, all you do is speak your word, turn it over to those in spirit who will take it and they will do what is, they're not gonna harm anybody, but they're gonna clean, clean the field. And when they get the, when we get the field clear of that outsider domination energy, we will be in sovereignty. That's when we will be in sovereignty. So what is your goal right now? Given that you talk about domination and I know that there are very views of the mandated vaccinations, but at the, at the very core of that, and this is worldwide now, the pandemic has taken humanity on a worldwide trip because it's, it's not, it's touching every single country. So, and every single culture, I mean, to the Amazon, you know, to Peru, to wherever. Mm -hmm. And it's a domination culture saying, you must do this or you're going to, you must do this or whatever, you know, and, and so it's dictatorial. So is what you're saying is that we as individuals, now that we know that we have this power of, 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 of speaking our word, we as individuals can, uh, can do what? What do we say? Do we, how do we connect? How do we do this? 
when you see or sense anything that feels off, you just say out loud or in your mind, because they you're listened to all the time. Every one of us has a team of, of what I call our causal team that's walked with us before birth and through and, and into birth, and they're with us now. And if you say to your causal team, Put a guardian circle around this situation. Something's off there. That's all you need to say. Guardian circle that situation. That brings in that whole protocol of, of, in, of in, putting a cocoon, bringing in secure channels of, of love and light to expand what in there is love and light expand. It brings in the PTO team that starts to clean anything out that has kept things trapped and that would continue to keep things trapped. Another thing you could just, just say is, hey, I don't know what's going on over there. Deep six, deep six also activates the guardian circle and activates the process of, of, of eliminating, it gives those off planet beings who are trained, who are ready, who's been doing it. We've been doing this work since 2000. And, and we've seen the impact in many, many, many ways, I, you know, in many ways. We aren't through yet because the love manifestation, what happens is if you don't get it at the tip, at the top of the tap, a little intuitive, maybe better, maybe I better stop the way I eat, or maybe I better, we don't get it at the tap. What does happen in the law of manifestation? You pretty soon get slapped at the side of the head and you're in surgery. The same thing has happened with these cultures. This, these cultures of domination in with what, you know, with your example, the, the vaccine and the pandemic is not new. Of course, it's, it's, of course they're behind it. Of course they are. What do you do? You call in those in the spiritual world who have the ability and the assignment to answer your request and say, yes, we're going to work here and we're going to work here and work here. Anything in that space that is valuable will be left. Anything that's going to enhance life will be left. Everything that does diminishes life that destroys parasitic by nature will be moved to where they belong, back where they made the choice. That's where they, that's where they belong. And how many, you said PTO, first of all, let's define some terms. And then um, how many people are in your tag teams? What, what are, is this a worldwide organization? What is this? Our the our our uh, the tag teams are galactically and and um, the the bigger amount of who we work with are in the spiritual realms because that's where we have the power to get to cause cause isn't here that's the symptom and if we only play with what's here we'll ne it'll just get bigger what happens right so so when i say the tag teams or the pto or whatever those beings exist in the spiritual realm they meet certain criteria we vet them all and the people that i've been that i work with on the planet are people who i've found or who find me and we are probably maybe 30 in number and i don't care it doesn't take a lot uh -huh. it doesn't take a lot what's what's what, happening what is yeah. PTO? define pto i will the PTO is not an acronym in it. It's not like TAG. What happened is I was, I was through dreams and other things. I was shown in uh, the mid nineties uh, that my work was drawing the attention of some, something was really dangerous. I didn't know about the outsiders then. Okay. So uh, they said, so we first put together a program of invisibility so that we could be invisible. My clients would be invisible. So the work that wouldn't shine so much but I soon was visited by a group off from off planet and out of our galactic family. And all these terms I know are very, you know, kind of new, but they had never been entrapped because their sensitivity boundary, their boundaries were so sensitive. They were so careful about who could come in and who couldn't come in. They were never deceived. So they had great awareness at any level of these, of the parasitic outsiders. They showed up in my room, in my bedroom, and, and, and they appear as dots of light, not as beings. And the dots of light, and they, and they change 
geometric form. And they said, we have the ability to eliminate these beings who are after you, basically. Would you like us to work with you? They were, that, that's a big thing right there. They didn't come and said, we will work with you. They said, we, we have this ability and we will work with you if you want us to. Personal choice. If you have somebody coming in any part of your life that says, this is what we're going to do and I'm going to do it, red flag, no, personal choice. So I turned to my spiritual teachers that I've been with, you know, for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And I said, do you know these beings? Because I don't. They're either new to me. And they said, yes, we absolutely know them. We know of them. And I said, should we work with them? They said, we absolutely. So we put together a, uh, a team and it, and it ended up being called PTO. And it was a team that was composed, composed of the tag healers who could take the grids and bring them back into balance. It was a, a, a group I call the, Plut the Plutonian family because they could hold the boundaries, they could hold the space. So if it were something over here that would fell off, we could hold that space, contain. And then these beings, and they've never wanted to be named, nor do they want to, you know, their, their planet, their place is way outside what we even are aware of. And, and so then and they then will come in and go through the space to identify, neutralize, and remove any any hint, vibrational hint form of any kind that, that uh, is of a uh, domination agenda. That team, and there's multiples now, there's multiples now. Uh, I call them the PTO just because I called them the PTO. And they respond, Deep Six, they respond to that. Guardian Circle, they respond to that. And so is there anything that you want to, um, I mean, I, I, I think, I don't really know what other people think who are on this call, really. Um, but is there, I would like to open it up to find out what they are thinking and if they have any questions. But before I do that, I want to know, is there something that you would like to say more of before we open it up? No, that's a lot. I mean, you know, I think for me, if, if individuals walk away with the understanding that they have the authority, it's been restored, they have the authority, and that authority is a single voice, and the, the first job we have is to, anything that feels off in any way, is to call in the PTO in my work, called the PTO, and say, deep six that area, something's over there, something's off, PTO. If, if that's the takeaway, I am pleased. Okay, great. Does anybody have any questions? I'm dying to ask a question. I knew I you can't. <laughs> Pardon me? Go ahead. Ah, oh. wow. Sharon, um, I know it doesn't work with your agenda, I'm assuming, but when I'm listening to somebody talk and they say something, I hear what they're saying. And I have thoughts about what they're saying and questions about what they're saying. And when I don't get to answer those, those kind of get lost. Now, I took some notes, but I don't know if I can go back and find that stuff. Um, would that work, me interrupting you? I, I, yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. It would work. Mm -hmm. Would that work with you, Anna? Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my, my, name is, is, my name is Juana. I'm not quite sure, Fred, what you're asking because I mean, uh, Sharon. I can has, explain it. Okay, because well, I mean, Sharon has spoken for quite a while and explained quite a bit of the system that she works with. So, what is it that you actually do? I'm asking if, as she's explaining this, okay, she's been talking for about an hour, and during that hour, if at seven minutes or ten minutes into it, if I had a question. Is it appropriate for me to ask the question? Well, I, according to Sharon, she said yes. Is that correct, Sharon? Yeah, I, I, and I think what I didn't do, Fred, and I apologize for that, because I, the conversation before was so like, oh my God, I have to, I have to say, here's a different system. Here's a different landscape. And so I got on a roll. 
and normally I was I would have done it maybe in chunks, <laughs> taken a break and say any questions. I didn't do that. And I apologize. And that would and that would work better probably for me and for you too. Yeah, but the reason I didn't stop you, Sharon, is because I wanted people to get some sort of a, a picture, a whole picture of who, not only who you are, but what it is that you're, because I doubt very much that anybody on this call has ever, ever heard about what it is that the, I call it a schematic, the schematic that you are explaining to us about there being eight worlds. And I'm assuming that we're in the first world. Is that correct? What world are we in? Eighth. We're the densest. We're the densest because of matter. Okay. So Fred, go ahead. What is it that you, did you have something that you wanted to ask Sharon? I have several things. First of all, I've had, heard a lot of this, what you've talked about. Not exactly, but um, I was with a group called the Inner Peace Movement and we did astro traveling. And as part of that, we did our spiritual guides mm -hmm. and we located those as part of our body. So we could ask a question and a part of our body, we could feel the answer and it would come to us. So somewhat similar to that. Yes. Um, let me go back to the very basic. You said we, the spirits come and they take a suit. Sometimes they take a female suit, sometimes a male suit. I'm wondering what, it sounds like the female suit has an agenda. Their agenda is to lead and to solve. And it sounds like the male agenda is more to support and nurture. Okay, I grew up feeling that that's my job. I got, I had six sisters and I'm the oldest. I had to nurture, I had to take care of, I had to be the buffer around them so they could express themselves. And I felt very comfortable doing that. Um, but I'm curious about the role that males and females have in relationship to the spirit that comes in. Um, that's not so much of a question. That's just more of a, my own curiosity. I'd, ra I'd rather take the time to have you answer things that are probably more relevant to me personally. And that is, um, um, you talked about the true nature and I, I'm not sure about my notes, but um, the true nature of men is to nurture. So I already talked about that. Earth, Earth is a place. Um, so I guess what's behind a lot of my questions is, it seems like um, maybe in the 60s and 70s, things were pretty good. Now, maybe it was because we were oblivious to what was really happening, but it seems like they were pretty good. And then it seems like as time went on, they only got worse. And they're continuing to get worse and worse and worse. And you mentioned 2002. I felt like they were getting worse a long time before that. Um, with your work, can you tell us a place where you've had a, a positive effect? Uh, definitely. Uh, no, in 2000 is when the galactic information really began to open up and be really powerfully for me in ways I could share with others. Um, you know, this has been around from the beginning. We've been on the planet 600,000 years, this mission force, 600,000 years. And, and, and the domination with, came in with us. It's nothing new. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <clears throat> uh, when, when, when I work in, in some of the, some of the um, examples, uh, again, you wouldn't be able to, to see uh, into the galactic worlds, but you know, I, 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 that's one of the places I, we, when I, we first started working in 2000, the galactic worlds, the seven worlds were very fractured. A, a lot of pockets of um, constriction and families turned off. And it was, it was really a place where those, in the, in the greater galactic system stayed away from us because we were kind of sticky. We were, we were dangerous for other people. So they put a boundary between what was going on for us because our galactic world was so, so uh, up, upheavally. And, and so at, at this point, the galactic worlds well, are hold pretty- Aaron, hold on one second. Ta uh, Fred, can you please mute? 
Am I buzzing? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Sharon. So the galactic worlds became more and more unified, unified, unified. And the way we we know we knew that is by asking what percentage and kind of tracking and trusting. And but but in uh, November of 2018, our galactic family was invited into this a greater galactic co collective council, not the galactic council, but the collective of galactic councils. We were in finally invited in because we were we were harmonious enough that we could then interact with them. And so some of the information that that is now coming through is from the galactic council group of which we're a part that is saying these agendas, not only do we need to move them back to their home, they can't even be chosen any longer. There's a lot of changes being made there. In personal, in individuals' personal lives, you can go on my website, there's a lot there. there you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, this is what's happened for me and uh, in the relationship, in personal experiences. I think one of the big things that I'm, I'm seeing uh, as a result of the bigger picture, because I'm usually the bigger per picture working on individuals, but always in, impacting the bigger picture, is the, the opening for new codes, new ley lines on the planet, for new codes, for an entirely new blueprint for the bodysuit, for new codes for the planetary system that is right right there ready to pop so the, the way i measure is maybe not the way you would measure you know that might not make any sense to you and and, and personal testimonials are more you'd find on my on my website if that makes sense uh not really but i understand what you're saying and maybe i need to read your website okay Thank you. welcome to so does um, anybody else have something that they either would like to ask or get clarification about? Yes, Juana, Peter has a question. Okay. Hola, buenas noches. Eh, bueno, por lo general, en mis meditaciones siempre he tenido las visiones o conexión de estar en, en el universo. Uh, generally, when Peter meditates, he says that he gets to connect with the universe. Mm -hmm. Y quería saber si se necesita, digamos, alguna preparación o estar, tomar algún curso, algo que te ayude a conectarte con esas familias este, galácticas. Uh, he's wondering if it's necessary to take a course or a program to be able to connect with the galactic families that you were talking about. Y que si habría de repente alguna diferencia en utilizar otro idioma y, y no el inglés, ¿no? And also if there would be any difference in using another language instead of English like Spanish, for instance. Bueno, ¿cómo podría saber que sí me estoy conectando con ellos? And also he wants to know how he can tell he's actually connecting with them, that he's talking to the right people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I do have courses, of course. I do have courses. But I also do, um, I, I, how, how, I mean, this job that we're on, is multifaceted. You know, Juana, I, I said it's simple, it's simple and you said it's complex. It's both, it's absolutely, it's huge. And and every everybody who's in a bodysuit, and that's how I see us, we are in a bodysuit. We are here voluntarily on this mission. We're part of the mission. We have something we are called to do. And, uh, and whatever that is, by doing it well, is our piece of the puzzle. And, and to learn more about some of the things I talk about, like the divine families, the, the, connecting to your divine family has only been possible in the last like three or four years because there's so much static to, that, that we couldn't get there. We had to connect with maybe the guides or with ascended masters or, you know, there were step downs, step downs. We needed them. They kept us going, but now there's a, there's a way to connect way up to the divine, your divine family. And that's very different too. And, and for me, I always start my students and even my clients with them. They're in charge of their life. So I use what's called a reality statement, reality shift. It's a, it's affirmations on high octane. 
all of that's on my website too. But we would say the, the qualities of, and Peter, you've got, I mean, you, I know I, I've, you know, I've seen, I, I've, I watched your interview, so I have not saying anything that you don't know, uh, but, but with my, when anybody is starting to say, I want a more connection, I say, start with a, a statement that says, my guides, my spiritual teachers have the qualities of and you do you find they're 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 tr they're tr truthful. They have my highest good in mind. They are they are supportive. Whatever the qualities are, you make a statement and you and you write that statement out. That's a, it's like an affirmation. A reality shift takes it way beyond that. But you start with the qualities, and that begins putting boundaries in place, so that that's who you could that's who is allowed into your space when you're doing spiritual work. And and so how how do you know then you're that you're connected with your to your divine family, is is you ask, and I tell you there is um, there when I I was flying and I think this will answer the question from a different perspective. I was flying to do work. I was flying from the Seattle area down to Salt Lake City, Utah, and I was just beginning to understand that, that there were these beings that were like you know, like parasitics. <laughs> and I said, so I'm on the plane and I'm, and I, the question came up and I don't know why, but, it, and I, so I said to my, to my guides, my team, I call them my team, what would happen? And what shall I do? Like if I'm doing work and one of those beings show, shows up, what do I do? And they said, look them in the eye. Just look them in the eye. I said, okay. Cause I, you know, so I get into Salt Lake and lo and behold, one of the first women who come in to, to have a session is a tiny little lady. And she said, I feel like I am totally possessed. I'm going like, oh my God, I hadn't been talking about possession. That's not what I was doing. But she came, put her on the table and she was like an apartment house. These, you know, I could sense and we'd move one out and there'd be, and it was like, we had to totally help reconfigure. And all of a sudden this voice, she, she just sat up, and it wasn't her speaking. She said, we don't want you here. And then she was back on the table and there was a being and I don't always see, I'm not clairvoyant. That's not my, but there was this being very tall there by me, the side of the table. And he, he held that stance. And I just looked in his eyes. I didn't feel there wasn't a fight. There wasn't a pressure who the biggest, biggest balls wins. No, I just held it because I'm holding that. No, deep six, not acceptable. You don't belong here. I just held it in my mind, looked in his eyes. Whew, he was gone. He was gone. You know, so often one of the things that I also teach, you know, there's a lot of little processes you put in your toolbox. All of us do. But there's a process just simply if you have a, a, a even if it's a, a, a thought or an emotion, you know, we often assume it's us. And I teach my students to ask that discernment space. Are you of my light? Meaning, are you of the divine family? Are you of my light? And listen. And if that being that's causing that ripple is of your light, even if it's a ripple of fear, it's your creation, you then have the, the opportunity to message and clear it and change it. But if it is, is a domination presence, it will say no. Or it won't answer you. Or it'll be, oh, maybe, oh, maybe, wishy-washy. And, and when you get that, then you just say to the PTO, PTO, this is not of my life. And they'll do the same thing. Contain the space, neutralize the energy, call you know, all, the, all the extensions and move it back to where it belongs. And so that's another thing you can always use too, Peter, is like, are you of my light? Are you of my family? And, and I'll, uh, but you set the criteria of I'm connected to my divine family of origin and, and learning what that means is part of what I teach. And I teach it either in course or individually or in sessions or, you know, in a lot of different ways. So thanks for that question, Peter. 
Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. That yeah. was great. Lots of good information yeah. and pointers as to where to start. Yeah, and, and language, you know, language is has there's that has nothing to do with anything, does it, except how we on this planet can make ourselves understood. And there's languages on a lot of different levels. And so whatever language you, you work with is perfect. Okay. Um, does anybody else have a question or uh, like clarification or a comment? If I may, Juana, this is uh, Pratima. Hello, Sharon. Hi, love. Um, yeah, when you said about uh, asking the question or rather saying, the, uh, giving the affirmation, I would say, um, what you said, um, is that like a prayer? It's, you, it could be made into a prayer, but it's really, it's, it, it is in alignment to the law of personal choice of ask and receive. And you can make that ask in any way you choose. You could make it into a prayer. You can make it into a song. You can make it in anything. Um, anything that's, you know, for you take the energy and you form it. We form it usually into words. I, let, me, let me take you through the steps of what I call a reality shift. So, that you, so, so the reality statement is very much like an affirmation. So the qualities of those, my spiritual teachers are wisdom, truth, integrity, and highest good. That's the statement. The reality shift then would call in your teams because we have teams that came in with us ready to work with us. So I'm calling in my team. So the second part would be, I say to my team, move my consciousness and the consciousness to all of all to whom I'm connected in love into that reality. So you're gonna have them, they're gonna start moving you right away. Then I'm gonna call the P, T, PTO and, D, and, and tag deep six, anything that is, has, or would keep me from that reality. So we're being very proactive. Then we're gonna call to our causal team that those who helped us design our plan, who helped us put together a software program for, for our, our life causal team, design a program for myself and all whom I'm connected in love for our highest expression and experience of that reality. Download it into our first dimensional field and anchor it in the hardware landscape in the first in the fifth dimension activating it for this lifetime so that's how that's the how we make choices in the, in the tag community we don't just do a statement we make choices that way thank you for mentioning the fifth dimension now i get it yeah uh, good thanks for your question protima uh, is there anybody else who has um, a need for clarification, a question, a comment? Yes, I have a question. Um, this is this is Anna, and uh, I just wanted. It was interesting when you mentioned about how um, we have a. Uh, an, an assignment or a mission from our at, from our galactic family, and um, just wanted to know: Can you give an example of a mission and what to 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 what extent that mission can be for a person coming here on Earth with with the uh, female or male body? Yeah, there's about all of those threads kind of come together. Divine family. There's seven families. And each of those families chose an agenda, and that's an agenda for the entire group of millions. So, so one example would be to experience joy. That would be one type, what one family does have that as an agenda. When you, as a soul, decides you're going to incarnate, and whether you believe in reincarnation or not, when you incarnate, you make plans. You don't come haphazardly, and you come by choice. Being on the earth is a volunteer mission. 
You are not forced here. So, so when I talk about us and, this, uh, and the assigned vibration or our purpose for this lifetime, that's a different thing. That's a personal, I call it assigned vibration. And usually it equates to a vibrational range. And so let's say that your assigned vibration for this lifetime is to understand what love is and what love is not. To, to get back into the harmony of, of love or balance, right? Because love has been used to, to hurt and harm and trap. So I want to get rid of all of the, So this is what you're, you're thinking would be. I want to get rid of all the old patterns, the old storages, the old assumptions that I have experienced in my lifetime or my family's lifetime that has made love so muddy, so unsafe. And so part of your experiences here would be you would have experiences of unsafety and love or love doesn't work to give you the opportunity to clear up the old storage. Nope, I'm not going to keep that one. That's, that's your personal journey of healing. That is not, that doesn't have to do uh, with um, the, uh, the outsiders. The outsiders don't want us to even get to our journey of healing. That's why we want to get sovereignty. So we don't have them interfering and messing around and keeping us deceived. We want them out of the way. And then what we have wanted to do and tried to do all along, which is get ourselves back into resonance with our true nature of aspects of good and harmony, which is, which is who we are as divine beings. Uh, and, and so that's a personal journey. And, and that's usually activated by what I call the assigned vibration for this lifetime. So it's two different things. Does that answer your question, Anna? Uh, yes, thank you. That was that was perfect. Okay, thank you for asking. Is there anybody else who has a question or needs clarification? One more of my, uh, his name is Joe, he's my significant other. Hi, Joe. Yes. Hello, I've got a question. Um, back in 2003, my wife got in an accident, it killed her, and it left my other son. Uh, he's here with me now. His name is Diego. It left Diego. him uh, brain damaged. Uh, his brother also survived the wreck. But when I married my wife, uh, it was almost because I felt that I was drawn to the place to meet her without even wanting to go there or needing to go there or it was like I was called to do a mission and uh, it has been nothing but you know in, a, in one sense pure hell and in another sense joy mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy helping my son with brain damage that he's getting better and uh, he's been able to uh, move forward in his life but um, uh, I wanted to find out I don't, I, I remember saying, yes, I said, God, I will accept this mission, but I didn't realize that it was going to be like uh, carrying the world on my shoulders. What is all of that about? In our birth plan, you know, when, before we, before, before we incarnate, so we're got the idea in our little soul, soul sense, we are going to incarnate. And, and so we call together, and that's off planet. We're not in the earth regions at all. We're off planet. And we call to us our trusted colleagues to come together in what I call the causal team. And they help us, what do we want to do? What do we want to accomplish? What do we want to heal? And we make contracts with people to do something in behalf of them, with them, as part of that plan. So when I do a, se a session, when I'm doing a session with individuals, one of the questions, it's not uncommon for them to say, why am I with this person or why is that person in my life? And so what I, I do, I check with their higher self and their causal team to say, is there contracts here? And I bet if we checked, we would say, yes, you had a contract with, with that person at a soul level. And the contract, it was to do this for them, to have that from them. I mean, the, the contracts pull us together because we have made promises to accomplish something. And, and so I, that sounds exactly like that's what it was. There was a contract made. It was part of your birth plan, part of her birth plan. 
and it, and it, it, it was to accomplish something. <laughs> and you, I, I'd have to ask because I, I get information from your team. In, and, it, and undoubtedly, uh, rarely are there contracts made if you haven't had some interaction with, on a, uh, with that person in other time or place that says, let's continue the walk or let's make it, let's change it and make it better this time. Or let's, you know, there's a reason for contracts. So it sounds to me like it's a contract that you made, but it's the solo level contract. Well, and it's, they're not I, always I, easy. I can appreciate that, but I'm thinking that uh, if I take care of my sons, uh, even at 20 years old now that he's a, uh, he's a young man, um, I want to think that if I had a contract, it was probably with him in a past life and me having to correct something that I've probably done mm -hmm. then and now I'm paying it back. But when does that end? <laughs> all, of those, well, all of those are questions, you know, that it's important to be able to have a way to ask them and get answers. And, and, and I do that in sessions and I teach people how to do that for themselves in classes. So yeah, you're, you're, you're not alone in those kind of wonderings. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I kind of feel like we're coming to the end of our time together tonight. Uh, how do you feel, Sharon? Uh, let's see. I think there was one other question. Was it Fundy? Oh, I don't know. Is there, Fundy, did you have a question? I hey, agree, these everyone. I, I'm just happy to chime in. I just met Juana recently and the information and the topics discussed um, just gives me, um, it's, it's nice to find people talking on this level. Yeah. You know, it's, it's educational for me. I'm in understanding. Um, but I look forward to listening and, and interacting more in the future with you guys. This is um, wonderful. You don't get this every day. And you don't meet a woman like I met Wanda every day either. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yes, <it's> true. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad you found her. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> so uh, let's... Uh, what I'd like to do, Sharon, is give you an opportunity to bring to a close, if that feels correct and, and right to you. Does it feel like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. I think, I think we're really spread big and come back together. It's been a wonderful opportunity. So thank you all for being here. Yeah, and I want to remind folks that I did include Sharon's uh, website in the email that you got and her uh, website will open up a whole new world. I mean, you've gotten a little bit of a taste tonight and that's why I had her on the show. Um, and she also offers a 30 minute free conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to have that, it's available to you, just go to her website also, I believe on the website, Sharon, you have the links to your YouTube channel. Is that correct? On my website, there's a link to what's called Sacred Ground Center. And if you go to the Sacred Ground Center, there are, that's where all my, a lot of material is in my ebooks, my YouTubes, my podcasts, um, classes yeah. can yeah. be accessed through that. So you can kind of play around and, and yeah. kind of go, go, go as deep down the rabbit hole as you want to. Yeah, and I, I, I yeah we have we are we are we are so pulling back what I call the curtain of Oz. We are so doing that right now, and the pandemic is forcing it. <laughs> and and on in that and in that way, it's good. It's, it's global. It's a global, you know, slap us along the side of the head. Wake up. Where do you want? What do you want to be and create? And and we've been living in so many so many entrapping lies. That I'm just really glad to see see us be able to talk, like you say, Fundy, to be able to talk about it. And uh, what I share triggers what you know, triggers what somebody else will share, and it's a collaborative. It's collaborative. So thanks for, for all of you for being here, and thanks for the invitation, Juana. Oh yeah, of course. Thank and you. what I'm sorry, Juana. 
Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Juana. The email that you sent, just to notice, I think you're missing, and uh, because I tried to link, I know, click on that and it didn't go through. I think we're missing an I in the ah. Raiji part of, or I, I'm not sure how I pronounce it. R I E G I E. I think we're missing the I on it. If you'd want to correct that. But thank you again so much, Sharon and Juana, to everybody. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for noticing that, Pro. Um, geez, I didn't realize that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, so just, just the, and, and she's correct. Sharon and then Raji is how you pronounce it. Um, R I E G I E Maynard.com. Yeah. Um, I'm not, can you put it easily in the chat, your website? Mm -hmm. I can't easily do that without uh, losing my, my photo, but it looks, because I'm on a phone. I'm on an iPhone. Uh, so thank you for doing that, Sharon. And thank you for noticing that, Pro. Yes, there it is. Okay. Um, all right. I, I just wanted to say that I did go to uh, the YouTube portion of your your site, and it was wonderful because you you give very short you have very short snippets. Mm -hmm. We heard tonight all in one piece, which I think was really good because it gave people a grounding for uh, and an overview for what your work is, and so. Um, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us tonight. Been great. Thank you. Yeah, because I know it's late there. You're two hours. No, I'm, I'm right along with you, Anna. I'm just, oh. I'm just like an early bird, usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all. And I look forward to, I mean, I'm sure we'll be bumping shoulders here and there. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll know your faces now. So thank you so much. Many yes. Blessings. Thank you, everyone, for coming this evening. It's been a fascinating, uh, very satisfying for me evening, and especially during this time on our planet when there's so much chaos, diversity, um, pain, suffering. There's a lot of that going on right now. Families being torn apart, and it's just a, there's a lot. That's for sure. So um, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Sharon. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Yes. Okay, everyone. Good night. 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 Thank you. Night. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye. Yes. That was interesting. That